Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to be looking at the 2010 Essen release game called Era of Inventions. Era of Inventions is a 3 to 5 player worker placement game that takes about 90 minutes to complete. The goal of Era of Invention is quite simple. It is to gain as much influence in the Industrial Revolution as possible. And in order to gain influence points, you must invent, patent, and produce products over the course of the games. You try to become the most successful inventor in the Industrial Revolution. So let's go ahead and set up a three-player game and take a look inside. I've gone ahead and set up a three-player game, and what we're going to do is walk through all of these components in a little more detail so that when we get into the gameplay mechanics, everybody will have a better understanding of how a typical turn will play out. Now, it needs to be noted that in a three-player game, the setup is going to change a little bit depending upon the number of players. In a three-player game, also, there's only going to be nine rounds that will take place in a game. This is going to change depending upon whether four players or five players participate. So please read the rules and make sure you understand before setting up in the same manner that I have here. The first thing that we're going to start off with the components is the game board. Now, the game board consists of six major regions on here which can be influenced by the players by using their action tokens. Now going around the game board is an influence track and influence is the major way of in, in which players will win the game. The person with the most influence will win the game. However, it's not just where you finish your influence marker, but it's also some other bonus actions that will take place at the end such as whoever has the highest production values, um, whoever has the highest um, area on the patent track. So those will be added in as well and we'll get to those once we get to the end of this video. Now on the game board, as I previously mentioned, there are six different areas but we'll start outside of those six areas with this marker here. This is the uh, round track and at the start of the game the black marker will start on the one. For a three player game we're going to take nine rounds. Now there are six major areas in which players can use their action tokens through the course of the game. Each of these six areas has spots for two players. And they are here, 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 and finally down here. What each of these does is quite simple. The upper left hand, left hand one allows you to produce inventions. Producing inventions simply costs you whatever is on the bottom with resources and you get whatever is on the top. Over here is allowed, allows you to build factories. Building factories, again, allows you to pay whatever is down below to produce that factory. You take that card and place it on your side. You are allowed to run your factories. All the um, accumulated factories that you have throughout the game, you're allowed to produce whatever is resource is at the top when you actually run your factories. You're allowed to buy resources um, on any of these three ships or in any of these four buildings. The resources in the game consist of metals, technology, tools, wood, and coal. Now it needs to be noted that uh, for those players that are colorblind, you may have some problems differentiating two, di two of the different colors. The wood grain and the white look very similar for the fact that the white's not thoroughly painted white. And you can see a lot of the wood grain through them, and I've had difficulty differentiating the two. Players are also going to have a rough time, for those that are colorblind, differentiating the navy blue from the black tokens. I know here you can probably see very well on this high def camera but with poor lighting it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. Going back to the game board, the fourth area um, or the fifth area here is the exchange market which you're allowed to exchange resources from one to another and the last area which is the major area on the game board is the developing of new technologies and developing of patents. And we'll get into each of these in a little more detail once we get into the gameplay. Over here are all the different resources in the game and all of them come in denominations of one and three. The smaller cubes are your one denominations and your larger are your threes as well as your development cogs that you have up here um, which are octagonal and these come in denominations as well as one and three. You have black bonus tokens which can be purchased through the exchange market. You have all of your coinage in the game which are just gold coins. And again one more time to go through each of these resources. There is wood, there are tools, there are um, coal, technology, and metal. Now starting off the game each of the players is going to start with a designated number of different things. Now 
each of these players has their own starting factory and they're all color coordinated on the back so you know green goes with green and your dark blue or purple go with purple here. Each player is going to start with a number of action tokens in a three player game. Each player is going to start with all three of their action tokens. Each player is going to start with all 15 of their patent or technology tokens. Each player is going to start with three bonus tokens and two gold. And then each player is going to start off with um, three coal, one technology, one tool, one wood, and one metal. Now each of these players' factories produces wood at the start of the game. Let me get really close down here so everybody can see that. As you can see, each player will produce wood. The last noted token on here is the starting player. And we've just designated orange as the starting player. Looking at the game board, you're going to start with seven starting inventions and five starting factories which can be purchased. Each player is going to place their larger round um, token on the zero spot for the patent markers of which they can patent up to seven different things through the course of the game. And each player is going to place one of their large pawns on the zero of the influence track. So let's go ahead and go t into uh, some basic gameplay mechanics. Now as I previously mentioned, a three player game is going to last nine total rounds. Each of these rounds, however, is going to have two particular phases that take place in player order. The first of which is placing your player tokens. In a three player game, each player starts off with three player tokens. And in turn order, they will place one at a time on a particular one of these six different locations. When all the players have placed all three of their player action tokens onto the board, the second phase happens in which players will resolve again in player order each of these particular action tokens um, and removing them and taking those particular actions on those areas. So what we're going to discuss here is each of these different tokens or areas and what they allow the players to do. Starting off with the orange player, we'll start off very simple and look at the shipyards. Now what they've done here in this buy resource phase is they place one of their tokens, they will remove it, and which will allow them to buy either one, two, or three sets of resources in any of these particular areas. If they were to buy one set of resources, they simply pay one gold to the bank. If they buy two, they pay two, and if they pay three, they take three. So say the orange player had enough money to buy three sets of resources. He could take all of the blacks, all of the browns, or wood, and then all the metal from here. And his turn would be simply up. Very easy to understand. Next we'll go to the green player and we'll look at the exchange market. First thing he would do is he would remove his token signifying that he's taking an action there. On this area, players are allowed to take up to five total actions. However, they're only allowed to take three actions in one particular area. There are three different areas in the exchange market. So if he wanted to take all five actions, he could take three here, and then two here, or three here, one and one, or in any combination they see here, but a maximum of three in one area. What the exchange market does is allow you usually to exchange something for something else. For instance, one cog for two gold, or two gold for one cog. One cog for one influence, or two gold for one influence. Two gold for one bonus marker, which are those black action markers. Or allow you to change two resources into one other resources, or two gold into one resource. Very easy to understand. Again, you can take any combination of up to five total actions. It needs to be noted that if a player goes to any of these locations and simply does not wish to take an action, he can do that. And that is very useful for blocking out characters because there can only be two action tokens in each particular area. Once that player is done, we'll look at another one. Let's go up here and look at the blue player up here in the factories. A player is allowed to buy up to three total factories per token that he has in this location. If he had enough resources, say he takes this for one coal and two wood, and he takes this one for three wood. He simply buys both of these, returns the resources to the supply, and he places them in his factory area. Now let's go back to blue and say a whole round has passed. Let's see what happens when an area is actually produced. He's allowed to produce all of the factories in his particular area. At this moment, he's allowed to produce one wood, one cog, and one technology. Producing allows him to take all those resources and put it into his supply. Very easy to understand, very easy to enact. Let's say, for instance, the blue player instead decided to go up here and buy a particular invention. Again, he would just simply pay whatever is below into the supply 
and he would get whatever it says on here. So he would gain one gold for returning those, and you would take that, and you would simply discard it. Very easy to understand how all those actions work. The most difficult one to explain is the actual uh, invention of original inventions and the patent system. When a player places something here, he's allowed to take one of two actions, either inventing something or patenting something. We'll start off with the inventions. There's two different ways to invent something. There are original inventions for each of the nine different things, and they are signified by the gold um, areas that you see. And then there are technological inventions, which have to be done after the invention is originally produced. Now, there are several different kinds of things that can be invented, such as the cash register, automobile, the train, and the, uh, the plane. Now, each of these costs a particular resource in COGS. As you can see, some of the more expensive ones go from one all the way up to five for the automobile. When a player decides to invent something, they have to expend that many COGS. Let's say, for instance, that the blue player had enough COGS to produce um, this automobile here. He simply expends three COGS back to the supply and places his patent marker or his um, invention marker onto the three here on the left hand side, moving his influence up three spots. Also, since he stopped in this area, he would gain one technology marker. Very easy to understand. What happens here is the player has now invented the automobile. So we would go through this deck of cards until we found the automobile and there are three total automobiles. They would be shuffled and placed here to be reseeded into this area um, on the next turn. What this allows the players to do is it allows other players to now produce that particular item. So the automobile would now be able to be produced. Whenever someone produces that item, they would, of course, get whatever is on the top of the card. However, the original inventor would also get two influence from it. So as you can see, when you invent stuff, you're going to get a kickback from that through the course of the game. As the game progresses, players can eventually build technological ones, and these allow players to um, only build the silver ones once the gold one is originally um, produced. Now, they work in the same way. You have to expend X number of cogs to be able to um, gain that much influence. Players can also decide to patent instead. When they patent, they simply move their marker down here. And in order to patent, they would have to spend a turn, move their marker up, and expend that much gold, gain that much influence, and then allow them to move patent down. Well, what does a patent allow you to do? As I previously mentioned, there are three cards for each of these inventions that will get seeded into the deck. One of them is a fake invention, which players will not receive a kickback for unless they have it patented. When they have something patent, even the fake inventions will earn them influence as the course of the game progresses. Now, at the end of each round, all of the resources are refilled, the old factories are moved out, the old inventions are moved out, um, and new ones will come in. This will uh, progress through nine total rounds until the end of the game. In addition to wherever they end the game with on the influence track, they're going to add in five additional influence points for whoever has the most number of patents five additional influence points for whoever has invested the most number of cogs on the invention area and last whoever has the most production value simply go over look at all your factories add up all the numbers at the top so one one and one whoever has the most gets five additional influence i really like the game for the fact that it flows extremely well it's very easy to play the first time we played it took only about ninety minutes each additional play took about an hour it's not going to break any walls down with any kind of new kind of mechanics and introduce but it does everything extremely well from start to finish. It plays quickly, very little downtime, very easy to teach newcomers, and very easy to learn. So this is definitely a game that I would take a look at if it's on your horizon or if it's even you're remotely interested in this video. That's Air of Inventions, and thank you very much for watching.